Hey there everyone, again we're going to be looking at another Autodesk Fusion 360 Certified User Exam Objective and with that we're going to take a look at our part, part modeling section which is going to be dealing with creating construction planes and axes. So here in Fusion I have a part created so called construction geometry and so this is kind of a very basic part that I use to practice with cons creating construction geometry so we're going to be working with Mainly, you got a few sections here. You got one that deals with planes at the top. You got a second section that all deals with axes or creating an axis. And then the third section is creating points. So the ACU exam only covers the first two sections. So that's all that this video is going to cover. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of work our way down, just kind of creating a lot of the construction geometries. The first one is going to be an offset plane. Offset plane is pretty easy. You can either choose one of the principal work planes or you can select a face and then set it offset at a certain distance away from there and then either you can click and drag or you can type in a number or you could also say to an object as well and then select it right now I don't have any really objects honestly other than this other point down here that I'm picking up but allows me to go through an offset from that but again a distance is what we have for an offset plane going through the next one plane at an angle if I select, for example, the uh, edge, it's looking for a line. So if I select this top line, I can set a plane at, let's say, 45 degrees and then have it be uh, where I can then create a sketch on the work plane and be able to draw something and have it come off of there. So that's really what all these work planes are used for is how to be able to create more complicated geometry and set up sketch uh, a surface for the sketch to be placed on. Tangent plane is pretty easy, so if you select a face of a circular object, it's going to set, as I click and drag the grip, it stays tangent to the face of the cylinder that I have here. So, And I can set it at a different angle or a different position that I need. Mid plane is a pretty easy object, so what it does is that, for example, if I choose like this side and then if I choose this face, it's going to put a work plane right down the center between, right in the middle of the two faces that I select. So mid plane just goes through and puts that in there, which can be very beneficial. You can also use it for some mirroring and some patterning options as well. So as we go through, plane through two edges. So here I'll select this edge and I'll select this edge and that's going to create a plane right there at where are those two lines that I selected. If I hit the X, I can always go through and choose like maybe this one and this one and you can see what kind of effect that it has. Plane through three points. If I choose the points, which are like the corners, I can choose this one and this one and then this one. And now we'll go through and do the same kind of thing. So this plane is going to be uh, touching right at those points. plane that's tangent to a face at a point so here it kind of tells me what to do so here it's not as common but if you select your um, cylindrical face and I'm going to select at this point it's going to go through and put that again tangent to the face and it's going to be following that point as well so again this one's not near as common of a construction geometry but can be used on kind of like how they were saying in the tooltip it can be used for modeling tools like split body and things like that. The last one here is plane along a path. So when you select it, here's what I'll do is I like to go through and when you start to, it says to choose the path and we have a tangent chain. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this edge here. Now it's going to follow along the edge and it has certain points it's picked up. So if I hit cancel, I'm going to try that one more time. So here's where we go through and we can get, like for example, here's our cylinder so we can go through and set a plane and you can see where it kind of starts and stops and that's just some of the some of the things that you can do with a plane along a path as you go along and you can select what edge or face and it's going to follow that line and put that plane kind of perpendicular to the line so all right so that covers all the planes now we're going to look at the axes so the axis First one here is axis through a cylinder, cone, or torus. So if I just choose a cylinder, it's going to put a it's going to put an axis right down through the center. It's going to find the direct center and put an axis through there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this uh, plane 
and I'm going to delete this one as well. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the next option, axis perpendicular at a point. So if we had a point on our face here, wherever we click, it's going to set a, or if you click somewhere, it's not as precise uh, unless you have a point there. So points can be used quite a bit. And, uh, you know, that kind of helps with some of the, the accuracy there. Again, not quite as common. Access through two, two planes. So I can choose like maybe here and here, and that's going to put an axis where those are connected. Again, just to kind of show that off, if I go through and use like, for example, even this, and I need something that's kind of perpendicular, I can choose these two. And it's going to put an axis right at the edge where those two planes meet. I can do an axis through two points. So like here, if I click the corners, go down to down, it's going to put an axis right down where those are connected. Kind of like drawing a line. Axis through an edge. That one's pretty easy. I can choose an edge like this, put an axis right there. And then the last one, axis perpendicular to face at a point. So again, I can choose like this one. And if I choose the point for the origin, it'll put it right at the point. So I select the face and it puts it right at that point that we have there. So again, a lot of different ways that you can get different construction geometries. And some may look like they even had the same kind of effect. And it depends on how complex your part is. This one here is just a really good example that I used to show how to create a lot of the very common construction uh, geometry uh, kind of elements that we have. So the last thing I'll leave you with is anytime you create, for example, a, uh, a con any construction geometries like a tangent plane, I'll go ahead and set one here you will gain a folder in your browser and then you'll also notice it will show up in your model history tree. So it is something that can be edited and when you right click and choose edit feature, you can go through and make changes and, uh, and change like the reference plane or anything like that. But that is something that can be edited and be tracked in your browser in your model history tree as you go through and are modeling the different parts. So. Uh, it can also be something that can be deleted. So that's what I'll do. And then once I lose that construction geometry, that folder goes away. So, all right, this video con concludes on how to create construction geometries uh, within Fusion 360 for the Autodesk Certified User uh, Exam. And again, continue to practice, continue to study. The goal of this is to make you successful on the first attempt. So if you have questions, contact me. But in the meantime, continue to look through some of the videos spotlighting other Autodesk Fusion 360 exam objectives.